So, gee, so some microphone is actually working. Ah, this one. Okay, because it seems that someone was pretty angry around here. Okay, so today we are going to see a, uh, this is my favorite uh, randomized uh, algorithm. It's a really extraordinarily clever uh, construction. Um, and it is a randomized algorithm to find uh, mean cut in undirected graphs, right? Uh, and um, of course, one way to, and it's mean cut without any restriction. There are no two vertices, a sink and a source that have to be in the opposite sides of partition. This is just splitting the graph into two so that the total capacity of edges that go across the two partitions is as small as possible. Now you could do that by essentially uh, trying all pairs of points. You declare one is a source, one is a sink. You do max flow, find the mean cut, and then uh, for all combinations you get uh, uh, of source and sink, you pick up whatever, whichever mean cut is minimal. But uh, as we mentioned last time, uh, max flow, the fastest max flow algorithm, uh, algorithms run in time number of vertices cubed. And if you have to repeat this uh, uh, for every pair of source and sink, you end up with the fifth degree, which is actually reducible to the fourth uh, degree, but is still very slow. So if you would find a mean cut uh, using max flow, uh, absolute mean cut, right, without any two designated vertices, the algorithm would be extremely slow. Now, there is a randomized algorithm that we are going to look at now that solves the same problem with very high probability, right? Correctly, in a much, uh, with, in a much more efficient way, uh, you will see uh, which bound, uh, uh, the bound for its complexity. So, um, so let's just, to set things up, Assume that you are given an undirected connected weighted graph uh, G with all with weights of all edges positive reals, right? So a cut T is uh, just any partition into the into two subsets, right? That exhaust V and are disjoint, uh, and the capacity of a cut is uh, just the sum total of capacities. Uh, or weights, uh, right, uh, of uh, these weights are just capacities of the edges, uh, uh, which have one end in X and the other end in Y. So because the graph is undirected, uh, right, in, uh, when we did this uh, for max flow, we only sum up the edges that go from the source towards the sink. But here the graph is uh, not uh, directed, uh, and there is no designated source and sink, so um, it's just the sum total of the weights of all edges, uh, right, that go across the cut when one end is in one side of the partition and the other in the other side of the partition, right? And of course, a cut is a minimal cut if it has the lowest capacity among all cuts in G. Uh, and we say that an edge belongs to a cut if it only if it essentially crosses the cut. It's just a matter of terminology. Okay. So the task is, if you are given a connected graph G, find a cut of minimal possible capacity. Of course. Uh, you cannot do it by brute force uh, because the number of 
all cuts in a graph with n vertices is 2 to the n, so uh, this, is, uh, this is not feasible. So the trick now is, uh, uh, and as I said, if you were to reduce this to max flow, uh, it, because max flow algorithms are cubic in the number of vertices, and you have to investigate different uh, sources and uh, what to choose for a source, what to choose for the sink, uh, the complexity just explodes and results in a prohibitively uh, slow algorithm. So um, what is the main, and the, you see the beauty of this algorithm is that the main idea is ridiculously simple. But the way how it is made to work is really remarkable. So let's see. Um, so the basic operation in the algorithm is contraction of edges, right? So what is contraction of edges? Uh, if you have an edge uv, you replace vertices, you delete vertices u and v, and you introduce a new vertex uv, such that uh, a point, another vertex, is connected to uh, uv just in case it was either connected to u or connected to v or maybe connected to both, right? So you simply merge two vertices together, right? And you preserve the edges, right? Any edge that went to either of the ends uh, Will be, uh, will be an edge between this outside point and the merged point, right? So uh, we denote this the thus obtained graph by G of uv. So the idea is, uh, what you are going to do is, uh, you will keep collapsing the edges until you get only two vertices. Uh, and you want to claim that the capacity of the mean cut is precisely the capacity of the single edge left, right? So it looks like a tall proposition, but uh, we will see how it is made uh, to work. So yeah, I really admire uh, this, uh, this algorithm very much. Karger must be a bloody smart guy. So first claim that we should see is uh, that if two vertices, u and v, belong to the same side of a minimal cut, after collapsing them in the resulting graph, the capacity of the mean cut remains the same. So in the collapsed graph, mean cut will have exactly the same capacity as the graph had before the vertices uh, were collapsed. And that's easy to see, right? Because when, if they both belong to um, the same side of the partition, after you collapse them, you are replacing, say, uh, an edge from X to U and an, uh, an edge from X to V by an edge and after collapsing, uh, if uh, the two edges, uh, right, uh, the, the resulting edge between x and the resulting vertex will have a weight that is sum of the weights of the two edges, right? So you replace these two edges with a single edge whose weight is the sum. And you can see clearly if something was a mean cut right here, and these two guys belong to the same size. After you collapse, uh, what, tra what traverses the cut will be of exactly the same capacity as it was uh, um, before, except that it was due to two edges, and now the same uh, capacity is due to a single edge. So if it happens as you collapse, that you collapse vertices belonging to the same side of a mean cut, then the capacity of the mean cut in the resulting graph will not happen. 
The second claim is that if two vertices belong to the opposite sides of the mean cut, then after collapsing them at the minimal cut in the collapsed graph, we'll have a capacity larger or equal to the capacity of the mean cut of the certain graph. And this is when things get messed up, right? Because if you collapse two vertices they are, that they are on opposite side, and if it happens that this increases the capacity of mean cut, then after you do your collapsing, you will have a wrong result, right? Because the collapse actually increased the capacity of the mean cut, so you will get a higher value of the mean cut than what it really is. And um, to see this, uh, that in fact uh, the capacity of the mean cut uh, can only increase, uh, so assume that uh, these two vertices U and V are in the opposite sides of the partition, we collapse them, and now you have an edge uh, with the sum of the uh, weights here, and the claim is uh, that the mean cut in this uh, graph can be only of larger or equal capacity to the mean cut here. And to see this, uh, we do the following trick, you see. So assume that the vertices are collapsed, find the mean, uh, let this be the mean cut in the new, <coughs> new graph, now you do the following, you now split these two vertices, but you keep them in the same side of the partition, right? Now the capacity of this cut here will be uh, exactly equal to the capacity of mean cut here. But uh, then the mean cut in this graph can have only smaller, you see, because the capacity of the mean cut is smaller or equal than the capacity of this particular cut. And the capacity of this particular cut is equal to the capacity of the cut here. So mean cut here can be only of smaller or uh, equal capacity than the capacity of the mean cut here. You understand this? So you simply take mean cut here, you split back the vertices, but you keep them in the same part of the partition. Then this cut, the, in this way you get a cut in the original graph, and the capacity of this cut is exactly equal to the capacity of the cut here, right? Because just this sum of the weights here will be split back, right? But the total capacity doesn't change. So for the mean cut here, there exists a cut here of the same capacity. And so consequently, the minimal cut here can be only smaller or equal than the capacity of that cut. Okay, so the idea would be now, you simply do this merging of vertices and you hope that you never ruin, never increase the capacity of the mean cut. So let's see what's the probability to, for this to happen. So first what we are going to show is an algorithm that doesn't quite work, but it kind of serves very well to present the main idea uh, of, the, of the Karger's algorithm. So here is the, and because the, algorithm that works will be obtained by refining this algorithm. So what is the idea? The idea is to do a random, to randomize the procedure. You pick an edge to contract with a probability that is proportional to the weight of that edge, or weight, or you can call it capacity of that edge, right? How do you do that? Well, you simply pick an edge with the, the probability that is the ratio between the weight of this uh, edge divided by some total of the weights of all edges, 
right, then of course these probabilities of all edges will add up precisely to one. So this is how you choose uh, an edge. So you choose an edge at random, but the probability for an edge to be chosen is precisely equal to this, namely proportional to its weight. And you continue until only one edge is left. Uh, and you take the capacity of that last edge to be the estimate of the capacity of the minimal cut in G. So let's see what is, what are the probabilities that this will work okay. Yeah? So first uh, theorem that we have to prove is uh, that uh, um, if you contract an edge, right, then the probability that the capacity of a mean cut in G, or in the collapsed version, uh, is larger than the capacity of a minimal cut in G, is smaller than 2 over n. So the probability that contracting that edge messed up, uh, that will lead you to a wrong answer because uh, the resulting graph will have a mean cut capacity larger than the original uh, graph, right? The probability that this happen is smaller than 2 over n. So probability in the very beginning, probability to mess it up after first contraction is very small. It's uh, 2 over the number of vertices in the graph. And you see, uh, of course, this algorithm is important when the graph is very large. Because if the graph is small, then uh, max flow algorithms can handle it despite uh, uh, the estimate of uh, uh, right, the number of vertices to the fourth power. So this is really an algorithm that is used when the graph is very large. But if the graph is very large, then the first contraction will mess up the mean cut capacity with the probability smaller than 2 over n. Why is this uh, so? So we have shown that the capacity of the mean cut can increase only if the vertices collapsed are on the opposite side of every mean cut. Right? Because if they are on the same side of at least one mean cut, after you merge them, this mean cut will remain the mean cut in the, in the, in the uh, uh, collapsed graph, right? So um, the probability that you will mess up uh, will happen only if the two vertices that you collapse are on the opposite side of every mean cut in G. So let M be a mean cut in G, uh, then uh, the probability that mean cut uh, in GU will be messed up, right? It will be larger than the mean cut of G, is smaller or equal than the probability that this edge crosses this mean cut, right? Because this mean cut will be ruined only if the uh, edges belong to the opposite side of the partition. So let's now compute this probability. This probability is, uh, of course, some of the weights of all edges that cross the mean cut, right? Because we pick uh, edges uh, with probability proportional to their weight, right? So uh, then the probability that you will pick an edge, that uh, the edge will belong to the cut, namely that it crosses the cut and thus it might mess up the mean cut, is equal to the ratio of the weights of all edges that cross this uh, uh, mean cut divided by the weights of all edges. So now what we want to do is we want to estimate some total of the weights of all edges in the graph 
in terms of the capacity of the mean cut. Because on the top, you have capacity, precisely capacity of a mean cut M, right? So we now want to kind of estimate how is this sum total of all capacities related to the capacity of the mean cut. Well, a quick observation is that sum total of all weights of all edges in a graph is the sum over all vertices is v in V of all edges that are incident to the vertex V. Why is this formula true? So on the left, you have twice the weight of all edges in the graph. On the right, you have, you sum over all vertices, you sum the weights of all edges that go out of this vertex. Exactly. Here, uh, all the edges are counted twice, once for one edge uh, end and once for the other end. So this is precisely the, the same, except that here it's a double counting, so you have two here. Okay. Now, the claim is that for every vertex V, capacities of all edges that go out of V must be larger or equal than the capacity of mean cut. Why do you think this is the case? So you take any vertex, you look at all edges that go out of that vertex, you sum up their capacities, and the claim is what you get must be bigger or equal than the capacity of mean cut. Why? Exactly. So if it's simply you can, for every vertex, you can consider a cut so that one side consists of a single vertex, namely that vertex, and all other vertices are in the other component. So the capacity of this cut is precisely the sum total of capacities of all edges that go out of V. So because this is a legitimate cut, mean cut can have only smaller or equal capacity to the capacity of this particular cut. Okay. So now we combine four and five to uh, replace, so each of these guys will be estimated by the capacity of mean cut. Right? So each of these will be, must be bigger or equal than mean cut, right? Because precisely these are the all vertice edges that go out of V. And you have <coughs> n many vertices. So this will be n many sums of the mean cut. So by dividing by two this equation, you get that the sum total of weights of all edges in the graph is bigger or equal than n times the capacity of mean cut divided by 2, right? So that's precisely what we need because now the top is just the capacity of the mean cut and the bottom is uh, uh, smaller or equal than n over 2 times mean cut. So this ratio uh, is, of course, then bigger or equal than that because we replace the bottom with something smaller. And uh, now mean cut on top and bottom cancel out and you get precisely 2 over n. So the probability to pick an edge that crosses a mean cut is smaller than 2 over n. Now you keep iterating this. So probability to mess it up 
right, is smaller or equal than 2 over n. So after the first contraction, probability to mess it up, namely that the capacity of a mean cut in the new graph is larger than the capacity in the original graph, is less than 2 over n. And uh, if you iterate this, right, if you keep merging the vertices, uh, what is the probability that the capacity gets preserved all along? Well, this is the capacity to mess it up in the first round. Uh, this is the probability to mess it up in the first round. So 1 minus this is the probability that uh, you didn't increase the capacity of mean cut after the first contraction. The second graph has one vertex less because you've merged the two. Probability not to mess it up is this and so forth. Right? If you multiply all of these, everything cancels out. This n minus 2 cancels this n minus 2, n minus 3 cancels n minus 3. And altogether, you get that only n and n minus 1 survive, and these two survives from the top. Everything else cancels out. And you get the probability that you will not mess it up so that this single edge that you get has capacity exactly equal to the mean cut is 2 over n times n minus 1, which is obviously larger. It's of the, uh, it's, it is, uh, um, so the probability, you see, that you didn't mess it up is actually very small. It's 2 over n squared. Now, I was really amazed, you see. So if I was trying and I came up with this ingenious idea to merge uh, vertices, uh, and I computed the probability and I got 2 over n squared, I would say, kiss it goodbye, uh, the, the trick doesn't work. But Karger realized um, that, you see, if you keep merging vertices, but you stop when you halve the size of the graph, then these guys are actually large. Probability to mess up things increases rapidly as you merge more and more vertices. So you are likely to mess it up in the second part of the contraction. So let's compute what's the probability that you did not mess up after collapsing n over too many edges, right? Uh, sorry, n over too many vertices. Well, again, you get this product, but here you stop when the size of the graph reaches n over 2. And if you multiply these together, you get this expression, which is approximately 1 quarter. So with probability 1 quarter, after you merge half of the vertices, you did not mess up the mean cut. Now with 1 quarter, you can actually work. Right? What is now the trick? Okay, with probability one quarter, your graph of size one half is uh, okay with probability one quarter, but you have to get the mean cut, you have to keep uh, merging further. The trick is you will merge further, but you will do that on four distinct copies. So let me show you what you do. Here it is. So you start with your graph that has n vertices. And with this randomized procedure, with probability one quarter, you will get a size, a graph of size n over 2 that has preserved mean cut. Well, the trick is now, repeat this algorithm, this random uh, con contraction, four times. 
So you will run four times this partial contraction, right? You take your graph, do one randomized partial contraction, you get one graph. Take again your graph, do another randomized contraction to the half size, you get another graph. And you do it four times. So the trick is now, as you <coughs> contract more and more vertices, uh, probability to mess it up increases. Uh, but so does the number of cases uh, on which you apply your algorithm. And they balance out. Uh, right? So as you progress, you contract it to half the size. Uh, well, instead of continuing, you first repeat this four times. Uh, now you have four graphs, each of them with probability one quarter that the cut, mean cut is preserved. Now you apply the same trick to the, each graph of size n over 2. You contract it into a graph of size n over 4, but you again repeat the procedure four times. So you generate altogether four graphs here. Four times four, there will be 16 graphs here, right? Um, in the next round, right, it will be 16 times four, 64 graphs here. So as you keep contracting, the probability that you will mess up increases, but also the number of graphs to which you apply your procedure increases also exponentially, right? And the probabilities then balance out, as you will see now. So let's first see what is the runtime of such an algorithm. So you have that uh, you reduce the run of, for a graph of size n into four runs uh, for a graph of size n over 2, and uh, plus the overhead of contraction. And clearly, um, because the number of edges is smaller than n squared, and you con contract only half of the number of edges, right? then uh, the, the price for collapsing is uh, of order n squared, right? Uh, it is four times uh, collapsing uh, into half the size, so um, right of the vertices and the number of edges that uh, you, you have to deal with is at most quadratic in n, so the overhead is quadratic. And the master theorem tells you that the solution to this recurrence is uh, with growth n squared times log n. Remember, uh, max flow runs uh, with uh, v cube, so it would be n cube, and you have to repeat it for different sources and things. And the best what you can do results in the, uh, an algorithm with n to the power 4. And here we have only n squared times a relatively small factor log n. So let's now calculate what is the probability that at least one, so you contract all of the graphs to a single edge, and you pick the edge of the smallest capacity as your estimate of the mean cut. So what's the probability that your answer will, for the mean cut will be correct? Well, probability for a success for a graph of size n is equal 1 minus probability of failure on all four branches, right? So to, to mess it up, you have to uh, inc have increased the capacity of the mean cut on all four branches. So this is 1 minus probability of the failure on one branch to the power 4. And now this probability of failure is replaced one with 1 minus probability of success on one branch. And we just saw that probability for a success 
for a graph of size. Uh, um, so let's now denote by P of n probability of success for a graph of size n. Uh, then you get the recurrence that P of n is 1 minus, and then here you have 1 minus 1 quarter, and this is probability of success for a graph of size n over 2. And lo and behold, if you now expand this a little bit, uh, and you keep only the first two terms, clearly this term is larger than this because the probability is smaller than one. So this is larger than this, so it is positive. So we take the estimate that P of n is bigger than P of n over 2 minus this. And then you show by induction that uh, uh, if uh, you assume that the probability of uh, uh, success for n over graph of size n over 2 is bigger than 1 over log n over 2, that this is also true for n, right? Because you see p of n is then equal to this from here. You replace this by the uh, logs, which is your inductive hypothesis. Uh, and after a little bit of arithmetical mumbo-jumbo, you get that this is, in fact, larger than 1 over log n, just by doing uh, algebraic transformation here. So, in short, probability of a success of your algorithm for a graph with n vertices is larger than 1 over log n. Now, log n grows rather slowly in n, so this is actually a large probability that allows you to boost it by again repeating the experiment uh, uh, several times. Namely, you will run your algorithm that I just described, right? Log n squared many times. So then the probability of success will be this is the probability of uh, success, right, for a single uh, run. Sorry, the probability to always fail, uh, you have to fail uh, this many times. So probability to fail taken to this power. Now you can use the fact that if k is large, then this expression 1 minus 1 over k to the k is equal 1 over e. And you get, lo and behold, that the probability of success is 1 minus e to the minus log n because uh, 1 log here plus this gives you e to the minus 1, so only 1 log is left. And this is precisely equal 1 minus 1 over n. So if you run your algorithm log n squared many times, you will succeed with extremely large probability if your graph is large. If your graph has a million vertices, then the probability of success will be 1 minus 1 over million, which is essentially 1 for all practical purposes. So now, what's the total run time? Well, each run we saw takes n squared log n many steps. If you run it log n squared many times, you have to multiply this by log n squared. And lo and behold, you get the estimate of the total run n squared log n cube. Now, log n is minuscule compared to n, right? So, um, this is much, much better than n to the fourth that uh, max flow algorithm uh, would, uh, uh, would produce, uh, right? So what is the moral of this story? So the moral of this story is there are kind of several important ingredients. One is uh, when you do a certain procedure, you keep track how likely the procedure is to work as you keep iterating. And he realized that if you stop halfway through, 
the probability of success is actually about one quarter. And then if probability of success is about one quarter, then it's kind of natural that if you repeat four times the experiment, the probability of success will be pretty large, right? And you keep shrinking into half size. Each time you shrink into half size, you replicate it four times on each branch, right? And lo and behold, then you get a probability of success that is 1 over log n. This type of probabilities can be boosted by a simple trick of repeating your, um, your experiment sufficiently many times. In this case, it was repeating it log n uh, squared many times to produce, uh, of course, if you repeat it even more, you can get here uh, log squared, so it would be uh, what uh, 1 over n to the power uh, log n, it would be even smaller, right? But this is actually just good enough for all practical purposes. So the, the idea was to produce something that has non-negligible uh, probability of success and it's 1 over log n, and it's non-negligible because log n grows slowly. Then you boost it by repeating the experiment log n squared many times to get an algorithm that is perfectly, um, that uh, succeeds with very large probability. So, yeah, it's uh, kind of very, very instructive construction when it comes to randomized algorithms, how you keep the likelihood of success reasonably large, even if fundamental operation uh, is likely to mess up things uh, uh, quickly. Okie dokie, so that would be all for today. I'll see you next week. <laughs>